Welcome to the new show, live from the studio here on a gorgeous Tuesday night it's in wonderful sunny weather. Devon. It is actually gorgeous tonight. It's a shame we can't do it outside. We could do, one day, <laughs> from the patio. Yeah, why not? That's it, barbecue going in the background. We could do that for the live show from when we got everyone down here for the Geek Meet. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? For the weekend. Mind you, after last year, everyone was half cut by five o'clock, yeah. so it might be a bit uh, <laughs> Bleak risque bleak. to sort of do it. Usual thing guys, post your questions up into the forum and we'll get through as many as we can, if not all of them, because we're so far undefeated, uh, to get through as many questions as you can. Well, this week, basically, Monday, we finished off the actual Sherman build, which I should have got out of the cabinet really, it's in the cabinet. It's now in residence, and as was pointed out to me, I have put the 50 calibre on upside down. Never mind. Have but you? Apparently, I have. And okay. you can, you can only way you notice is one little nodule. There's two nodules on the top, one at the bottom. I don't know how I got it out the wrong way because it all still fitted together. It must be ambidextrous. <laughs> so anyway, the last part of that went up with you on um, Monday. So that has completed that one. The final photos are up there. If you're a non-members, you can see that build, uh, obviously without the video bits, um, and everything is on the site as well in the recently completed section, which I have updated. The Jaguar's in there now, and that one, they're all in there as well. So if you want to have a look at those. Steady on. I know, absolutely. And then this week, I've been cracking on with the Bradley, which is now built. It looks very nice. Well, I say built, almost. All ready for paint. Gonna Some go with that one. detail on it. I must admit, again, main kits, beautiful. And I have got those um, tracks, but these work. And they only took about three hours to do. Because the only trouble is you've got four um, ejector pin tabs on each one to get rid of. Right. And if you don't trim them up and sand them up neatly, they don't floppy, don't they, they pinch on each other uh, and all the rest of it. So when they're right, they're absolutely fantastic. And they all drop in there and go together. One click fit, no problem at all, absolutely fantastic. So part one of that is going to be up with you on, um, well tomorrow, be up on Wednesday, and making our way through the bills, just like that. See, piece of cake, don't know how to do it. Very nice. Indeedy. So, Steve's with us as well. What have you been up to, Steve? Um, I've been doing more work on the Missouri. Try and show you. It's basically adding all the photo etch detail along the superstructure, um, such as all the doors, ports, yeah. kind of little crane hoist things. Um, it seems to take forever because obviously I'm going to remove the doors first, sand it, make sure it's all nice and clean, then assemble the doors and then glue them in place. So it's very time consuming. Um, as well as that, I went to a model show, the Sword and Lance at Darlington at the weekend. Uh, met quite a few members, so that was quite good. Not the biggest show, but brilliant show if you ever get the chance to go. Sunday had the geek meet. Um, so all the guys who live around this area came over and were there all day. And they've also been playing around with um, Silly Putter, which is the... Yeah. Isn't that Panzer Putty? <laughs> um, it, it's the same thing. Um, you don't get as much in a tin, um, but it is cheaper. But you don't need that much, but it is absolutely fantastic stuff. So... Just trying to open it up. It comes like that. It kind of self levels after a while, but it's a form of silicon, so you just plate. You can knead it, and then best thing is, for masking purposes, you can just pull it and stretch it, and then obviously use it to mask up camera patterns or any other type of masking you want. It's really clever stuff. Can it be reused after you spray it? Yeah, you can reuse it. As long as you, you have to keep, obviously keep it in the tin or it will dry out over time. Um, it don't leave any residue behind. It doesn't stick. So when you pull it off, something comes off straight away. You know, I've had no problems with it. Brilliant. And how much is that a pot? This is, you can get this for a fiver on eBay. Yeah. Uh, and you probably should be able to mask I want a 48 Spitfire or anything else with it. You can really stretch it. Um, you can roll it out. You can do what you want. You can put it over any kind of detail. And good thing is if you just put it over something for a load of raised detail, and if you just leave it for maybe half an hour, it kind of starts to settle down 
over yeah. the detail, like I saw when it were in the tin, I put that in as a, a ball like this at lunchtime, and it just settles down, kind of levels out, so it's very clever. How tacky is it? Is it likely to pull your photo etch off? No, I've been... Don't know if it'll pull photo etch off. Um, I was testing it on one of my tanks that I've already finished and put it over everything and didn't pull any of the loose little parts off. Because um, mm -hmm. good thing is you don't need to push down on it over delicate parts. You can let it so sink flat. down into it, yeah. Just enough can have... Um, and even when you touch it, you know, it leaves your fingerprint in there straight away. It's really... But the, I've got an anchor there which will be going on my ship, and you can just press it straight in there. Yeah. And, you know, when it pulls off, it leaves. Just comes straight out, leaves in then nothing left on there. Nice. It's really good stuff. So there we go. Mm. Fantastic. Nice one. Indeed. Brilliant. And your good self, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? I've been doing my B25. Did you finish your Night Fighter? I finished my night fight. Yeah, yeah I finished that one. Off. Right, good. I haven't seen it yet. No, you haven't. Is it being saved for the the final reveal? It video, is indeed. Is I've already started to put that together, um, ready for the final reveal. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I, while I was fiddling putting all the wings and the other bits and bobs on the tail of this one, mm -hmm. I was doing that at the same time. Um, canopy, excellent fit. Had no issues with that at all. Um, it was a shame that obviously all the detail that I've put into the in obviously in, you inside. To show the folks at home your handiwork. I'll let yeah. you pick it up. I don't know, that's quite a big lump, so it's quite safe to pick up. <laughs> well, you said that, so you <laughs> snapped the nose wheel off. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> <a good thing. laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, the, the canopy's gone on really well. There was there was no fit issues. Like, it literally just sat straight in. Mm -hmm. um, so that's in with just neat crystal clear because it was that good a fit. Um, so yeah, it's all ready for to be primed now. Now that I've um, mast oiled the clear parts on the top, mm -hmm. first time I've ever used the um, masking sets. Yeah. Um, the die cut. Yeah. And our die. Yeah. yeah. Um, to be honest, yeah, okay, a bit of a gimmick, <laughs> um, but I don't know whether it was quicker or not because by the time you peel them off and then try and stick, make sure that you got them up. Yeah, yeah. Line them up in the in, a, in the correct place. Mm -hmm. I still haven't worked out. Whether it's just as quick to My point with them is, on something like that where you've got circle ones, yep. they're worth their weight in gold because to try and cut a circle out, even with your brand new blade and all the rest of it, is a little bit tricky. So where you've got those oval shaped like windows and circle windows mm -hmm. you've got, it is brilliant. They will be better than I could ever do. But when it's on a square one, like the hindcall on the front of that, yep. I had the masking set and gave up because it was quicker just to get yep. in there and do it myself. You know, so from my point of view, I think they're worth the weight in gold if it's circles, ovals, yep. curved surfaces. But for square type stuff and just with gentle curves for the corners, then I'll just do it myself every time. But I've um, done again. It's an, oh, well, I say almost a first for me. Um, a lot more rescribing on this one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, again, I, I don't think it was a fit issue. I think it was more probably me putting it together where they didn't line up the, the seams. Um, well, I've obviously sanded them down to, so that they all uh, join up again. But no, it's come on quite nice. It quite is. enjoying it. And whose kit is that one? That's the Accurate Miniatures. Yeah, which was reboxed, I do believe, by Italy. We've done a reboxing right. of it, um, and it's a very nice kit. It's probably the best B25 out there. I would really, say. Really enjoying it, and I'm, I'm going to do the um, nose art for it as well with mm -hmm. all the different colours and the. I think it's like a, an eagle face on it. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be um, interesting for me to do. It is. And Steve, you did the Big Brother, didn't you? Indeed, yeah. You did the Monster HK in one thirty seconds in the same oh, lighting. Right. Yeah, OK. So, yes, that is... It's, uh, it was huge and a beautiful job because Steve actually had it with us at Telford. I don't mm -hmm. think it was last year. It was the year before, isn't it? You brought it to it, Yeah, a couple of years ago I did, yeah. Yeah. It, it is a really nice kit to build. Um, <laughs> only thing I'd say is don't waste a lot of money getting all the interior stuff because you can't really see it but but yeah it's a fantastic kit and it yeah. like you can get some amazing color schemes for it mm. um, and if you do want one I'd snap them up because I believe for example the glass nose one's gone out of production now 
so it's, you can struggle to find that one. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. I'll say that the interior, I must admit, it's got really good detail for the inside. Um, mm. I, I tried up, updating my build before I came in, but for some reason I had um, problems with photo bucket. Yeah. So I couldn't do it. But um, I've got some cracking pictures of all the detail set inside. Um, but then obviously once once you've closed up, you don't you don't see it because even though you got a couple of windows, you still ain't gonna see it. So. No. So it does seem a bit of a shame to spend sort of a good couple of days doing all the detail on the inside mm -hmm. for it to be closed up. But hey ho, it's all part of our modelling experience, as we say. Well, that's it. You know, but, if you have got the one with the glass nose up the front, up the front yeah, of the cockpit, yeah, it's all okay. It's just down in here. I know it's quite detailed down there. It is, and yeah. the Bombay as well is quite detailed as well. It is, yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, you don't see it once it's all done. So, but um, yeah, no, it's the, it's the first aircraft I've done for quite a while, mm -hmm. um, and I must admit, it's coming along quite nicely. I've obviously taken me time a bit more this time on it. Um, Learned my lesson with different bits and bobs, like obviously rescribing on the seam lines and all that sort of stuff as well before I would have sort of just sanded it and left it but I've actually attempted to do the rescribing this time very good so yeah really enjoying it yeah looking good so hopefully tomorrow I should be putting a coat of primer on it very good the moment where it all changes get the primer on it you build the construction and you get on that's the bit I like and then trying to fix the nose wheel yeah fix the nose wheel with piano wire which I've just <laughs> got in the pieces there you go, you go drill that you'll be fine yeah unfortunately uh, there's, there's the instructions tell you to put it in mm -hmm. um, obviously before you put the fuselage and all that together mm -hmm. uh, I'd l Steve I mean when you did yours did you put yours in before you put the fuselage together I did yes and I did break it yeah, oh, yeah. So that's not just me then I, I or me because I broke it as well when I've done one. <laughs> Has anyone actually not broken off I, the nose wheel on this? I, I can't <laughs> see any other way of doing it because once it's closed, it, I can't see how you're going to get it in there. Yeah. So it has. To, I've, no, I've it has to it go has, in now. I don't think on. there's a way of getting that in without it. But I, th I think as I've been handling it, I've just forgotten that it was there. And you do. And it's it's gone twang. Because actually, I was trying to be clever, and I put tape on mine, pinched to give it more strength. Mm -hmm. And um, I came to get the tape to take it off and it had snapped off had it? Oh, yeah because I thought I'm gonna be clever here <laughs> thinking ahead didn't work still managed to break it in there but yeah as I say the, we got them I think that was the fuel tank apparently from what I can recommend men for some somebody from um, Anthony's build mm -hmm. but that's the, yeah. an extra fuel tank mm -hmm. um, but obviously I've got the sides to go in I might put some bombs in I, I don't know let's yeah. see how it goes but yeah no it's really really, really enjoyable something a bit different it is and it's one of those kits as well because it's a good make um, and it's well detailed it was one of those kits that I again didn't want to do until my skills were better mm -hmm. um, but like you said before for other kits if you don't crack on and do it then you ain't gonna ever do it so true so I took the leap and decided to do it and you've done a great um, job on it as well. I'm quite glad that I have so far Absolutely, and that is part of the uh, twin tail SIG that's going on it at the is. moment. Yep. So you've got until the 26th of July on that one, so if you want to join in with that one, by all means do. It's a SIG, so there's no medals and prizes like we do with the full grill builds, but that's your one into that. It is. We had finished at the weekend was the egg. Easter egg one. Stravaganza Indeed. Easter egg annual hunt. Well done to everybody who took part in that one. Fantastic job amazing totally blown away Definitely. some of the entries yeah. you know i know i covered it in a new show but then um what we're going to do is obviously we do a final reveal for it and we'll yeah. get that one i'll start on that one as well yeah aired out and everything else so we'll get up in the next week or two those ones all sorted yep. with all your great builds on that one and don't forget the stirring up dust which this was my entry for that one <laughs> um it will be going to be running till the 21st of june for that one so you've still got have you put your photo build on on the on the on the website, I've actually started yeah. it set, so but there will be yes, no. Obviously, there are a couple of photos, <laughs> that screen grabs from the video. But say part one is going up; it will be up and done before the end of it, so that qualifies me. Yeah, <laughs> My just, party, I'm making the rules up. I, I can just hear Adam in the background now saying, "Oh, he's on about those bloody photos again." He is. <laughs> Get the photos up. Uh, but yeah, so um, let's say that one's going to be up as well, going right the way through. Um, but it's a couple of months on that and then we'll be switching over got to talk about we got down here i know steve did the same as me uh we all went mm. mad hobby link japan trouble is now they've got this thing in where you can only buy 
one kit of the Bandai series. They won't let you go out and buy five of each. Um, I think they got stunned when it first they were released and people did that and cleaned them out. So now they have a policy and it's one per household of each type per order. So um, Steve did the same as me, although he went even more wild than me. Um, and I got in the uh, TIE Fighter, the Advanced TIE Fighter, the Scout Walker or ATST, the X-Wing, as you know, you know I've already built an X-Wing, but I've got another one uh, and things like that. So um, you can never have too much of those. So they're gonna be up as a review this week. Um, and I intend to do the little scout walker quite shortly. Because if it's anything like the X-Wing, it'll just be a literally a one day build. Because they are that good. They are absolutely beautiful kits. Well, I love them. opened it and had a quick look and it looked very mm -hmm. detailed. Very it nice. did, I must admit, it's really, really nice. And Steve went totally overboard because Steve got the uh, the vinyl set ones as well. So which one of the ones did you get, Steve? I got Darth Vader, yeah. Stormtrooper, and the R2-D2 one as well. Which comes with R5 as well, isn't it? Which is a square one. Uh, R5 D4 or something. Yeah, that's the one. Bless him. But yeah, they're really nice. They are as well. Um, you know, you can get carried away. Indeed. And they're just about to release the Snow Speeder, which is due out next month, I do believe, due out in May. And then for June, they're bringing out the um, Scout Bike. So you've got the Star Wars Scout Trooper on his speeder bike. And that's a big one. Isn't that 112 or 116? Yeah, it's 112. 112, so that's slightly bigger scale. But again, absolutely fantastic. Really looking forward to those. And um, as a complete Star Wars anorak, as you all know, I'll be making my way through the series. <laughs> 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 I need another cabinet just for Star Wars. <laughs> you will, yeah. <laughs> Don't forget C-3PO's coming out soon as well. He's due out even sooner, isn't he? I think he's not very yeah. long at all. He's due out quite shortly. And also the 148th movable one. And with all the LEDs and sound effects, that's yeah. due out end of the month. But unfortunately, they've put an order stop on them, so now I haven't managed yeah. to pre-order one. I must admit, I managed to get my pre-order in on that. I've got that waiting to go in my little box thing they have on there. I was quite saw it quick, grab it in there. So I'm hoping <laughs> I'll be able to get that one. Uh, and everything else but it's a like, beautiful kit if you haven't seen them the x-wing build is going to be up whilst i'm away uh, which is three weeks from now um, so that full build will be up there as long as with the tumbler the bradley will be finished by then so will the sea harrier and another secret project Ta -ding! if he ever gets it done in time if not it'll be finished off when i get back <laughs> <laughs> uh, and everything else so yeah don't forget i'm away in three weeks time from the 7th of may um, and I'm away for three weeks. So remember, if you want to get things ordered, if you want to become a member, things like that, get them in before then because we are going to close the site to new subscribers and to new orders. Um, and we will clear all the backlog of orders before we go uh, and everything else like that. But we don't want to be in the situation where you haven't got your order or you can't get in the site or anything else like that. So if you are thinking about it, get in there quick. So yes. Lovely. So there we go. That's the news for today. As you know now, we're trying to do this so we've got somewhat of an idea what we're on about. Yeah. <laughs> is the plan, <laughs> roughly. Um, so if I just bring up the forum so we can sort of all see it in here together. Where are we? That's it. Um, here we go. Crikey, two pages of questions already. You lot really have been busy. Okay, so basically this one, um, last week we spoke about what got you into modelling. And today we're talking about modelling essentials. What you think, if you were coming out, if you are giving advice to somebody coming into the hobby or just generally, you know, in the shop and thinking, what do I need? And that was the question, wasn't it? It was. What do you think are modelling essentials? Yeah. Okay, so I'll start, because I can. Because you can, because I'm oh, the here boss. He goes with his... So I've got to save my <laughs> orange scissors, purely because I know it winds a lot of people up. But no, seriously, I've had these scissors it feels like 10 lifetimes and they're still going. And I, I must admit, now I've bought uh, uh, maybe the curved version You've of them. You've got the curvy one, which is great. But, but um, I must admit, I, they are really handy and mm -hmm. they, they do cut things cleanly off of the spruce. Yeah. As where with, with normal, well, the scissors that I've got, mm -hmm. normally you've got a big chunk yeah. left to clear up. As where with those you can get in nice and tight and they do give it a nice clean cut. Absolutely. And don't get me wrong, I know you can get obviously the nippers, uh, which are actually specifically designed to cutting sprue very close to you. The difference is, I'll cut piano wire with these 
and you know where I wouldn't trust to do that with a pair of decent side cutters that are designed for cutting sprue you know you actually got your industrial strength sprue cutters because I think you might take a chunk out of the teeth yeah this stuff is as hard as nails and mm -hmm. I've never failed me yet and um, admittedly every now and again you get a little bit of lump as I've got a cut through it where I've cut piano wire, but it soon gives way and we're back to normal and we're good to go again. But as I said, for something that's lasted me now, this particular pet set is definitely 15 years old now. Um, you know, and I've had no problems with them and they're still cutting as good as the day I've had them. I think are fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, little things, obviously a craft knife. I do my disposable ones purely as we spoke about most shows. I scares the death of me of anything with a sharp knife. And, and to, be, to be honest, when I built the X-Wing, for the actual construction phase, all I used was that pair of scissors and that knife, and I built the X-Wing. Didn't use any other tools. I didn't use any sanding sticks or anything. The plastic they use in these kits is exceptional, because when you cut it with a knife, uh, it cuts it extremely cleanly. It's like it's a crispy type of plastic. It's a decent hard plastic. It's not soft, it doesn't tear. And then to do little seam line cleanup, you just give it a scrape, and um, job done. So amazingly, I say the X-Wing, I know it hasn't got great lumps all over it. <laughs> it is a very nice kit um, with no problem at all. So I would say mine are the orange scissors, a disposable knife, okay? And that will give you your basics to move along with. My other ones that I think are really are a must, which I think people say about tweezers, but my other ones is spring-loaded tweezers yeah. because they're great, because they hold things together for you. Uh, and also you can then obviously hold small parts for when you're painting, when you're detailing, everything. Yeah, I must Dead have handy I've... having a pair of them. Until you've got a pair of them, you don't realize how much you use them. I bought two pairs, so I've got one, obviously I, uh, one pair I use for, for holding while I'm painting, mm -hmm. and I've got a clean pair that I use for my decals. Yeah. Well, I must admit, I use any of them for decals. The same thing as well, holding decals. <laughs> hold them in, bring them yeah. out. You can bring them, you can hover, yep. and then slip it off and all those things like that. So I think they're absolutely fantastic for that. And I, I believe I, I picked mine up from the tool shed in Plymouth for a pound. Yeah, because to be honest, <laughs> I have here... Yeah. You've got straight ones and then... This, then that's it, I've got the curved it. ones yeah. that are there. But the thing is, these here are Tamiya ones, which I think were a fiver. Right. Okay. okay, and these were out of like a bargain bin thing. And okay, the quality of the wood isn't very good on the sides, but technically it does the same thing. And which is, why well, the time this one's covered in paint, they're going to look the same. Mm -hmm. They're different in size and scale and all the rest of it, but technically they do the same thing. But again, I think those were like a quid versus a fiver. Yep. So usual thing, if you know where to look, you might be able to pick them up cheaper. Definitely, yeah. And things like that. So what would be your must haves? It's a shame I haven't got with me. Um, it's got to be uh, my tweezers, right? Um, and again, <laughs> from where I, where I work, <laughs> um, they're um, very like they got like a diamond shaped head to them, mm -hmm. so they've got a very sharp point on them. Yes. So it's so easy to pick up. Like these really, like not as lethal as those, but not not as bad. Yeah, these are. But it's so easy to pick small bits up with them. Yeah. Um, uh, what else will I, on a daily basis I use? <sighs> Again, it's probably what everybody else does. I picked myself up some of the safety, you know, safety knives. Mm -hmm. I picked up about. But you're a nightmare. Eight. You use surgical scalpels. Yeah, I've used scalpels. I, I don't anymore. But I've, I, in fact, I still got two in a packet that mm -hmm. I've not used. Yeah. Um, I use them if if I find that I'm struggling in cutting. Um, Masking for uh, canopies and stuff like that. Yeah, I use those ones for that because mm -hmm. they're nice, sharp, and f really fine, and can get in in close. Yeah. Um, but on a d on a day to day basis now, I've 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 bought about ten again, ten for about a pound, two mm -hmm. pound. Yeah. Which are ideal because you know if they break, they break. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. And to be honest, I, the reason I use these disposable ones as well, one is I only have to put out a tiny bit at the yeah. end, so I can't kill myself physically with something like that. But also, literally, every now and again, like I can do here, I'll come along and I'll just click right. off the next one, and then I've got a brand new blade, technically, for cutting, as you said, that type of thing, yeah. without the hassle of having to change blades. Remember, I've got spare blades and all the rest of it. Okay, so now that you've done that, what would you do with that bit? I'm just about to do it. This is what I do to all my <laughs> ones. I get a little bit of masking tape. So that everybody tape, would know. So that everyone would know. And I, this is exactly what I do. And I was just about to do it, actually. I will put it into a piece of masking tape. And I will roll it up. And then I'll bin it. So he's all protected. 
So if somebody is rummaging through the bin, <laughs> God knows why you'd want to. You don't slit yourself open. I've but it's more for me, the family and the animals, oh, that, the reason I do that. I never leave them lying around Ironwood, so I'm a bit sort of OCD with things like that. But again, being where I work, I, I've got access to a sharp box. Yeah, so you've got a little sharp, sharp, sharp. <laughs> Anyway, Steve, what about you? What do you have to have? What's your essentials? Um, well, I'm the same as you. I use good old... Is it Fiskars or Fisker, Scissors? Fiskars, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, these are Fiskars scissors. Um, for knife-wise, I use um, Swan Morton ACM blades, which are the craft ones. They're a lot stronger than your normal scalpel blades, so they won't break. Yeah. Um, you need a good pair of tweezers. Um, these are my favourite. They're a all metal that you can lock and they've got a thing oh, yeah. slide down and lock them but they've got a very fine tip so mm -hmm. it's good for detail um, I'd also say um, photo etch pliers as well these yeah. are the camera ones um, especially now more and more kits come with photo etch you do need something that can easily bend it so and you've been giving them a lot of use Working on the Missouri. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they're really my basics. Um, you could also throw in, I like to use these single edge razor blades um, yeah. for scraping, um, especially along getting seam lines off. They're very useful. And also for getting a really nice cut. Um, but the, they're the basics. And then obviously you get the more advanced tools that such as your Alex scrapers are, these are absolutely fantastic um, brilliant because you don't you can scrape along over the spine of aircraft long leading edges and you won't leave flat spots behind so there is still and next thing really is a good uh, range of sanding products yes don't Funny you, enough, don't, don't know, don't know, know what, where you get them yeah, from. Yeah, I don't know where you get them from, but I have heard there is a company that made an exceptionally good one, including a fantastic <laughs> range of skinny sticks that are available from a certain website not very far from here. <laughs> available in the store now. Uh, but yeah, um, I must admit, the Alex scrapers, one thing I will mention, I can't them. get them off before because I've got a magnetic one, they <laughs> stick, they're quite hard to get off. Little things like I use them on um, for doing these, which are the sort of the aerials for the, the Bradley. One thing you notice, if you get a situation where you've got um, an actual peg mark on there, you know, from the ejection, the gate coming mm -hmm. across from the, the, the thing, sand it that off, okay, and don't go in with a scraper until it's gone. Because the trouble is, otherwise you end up digging down in towards it. Okay, so once it's off, but once it's off, then scrape it. But the one thing I've learned by using this is that if you do little light movements, don't push it. Literally, don't go in there and start hacking away down, like ripping it out. I've learned now that you know, when you're doing it, if you do lots of little light moves, it gives you an absolute perfect finish that you don't even have to sand. Because what I was used to do was come along and literally scrape them clean and then come in with like a polisher and then literally go over the top of it with the polisher to get it up. But actually, if you just take your time and you're a little bit more you know, gentle with it and you sort of just gently scrape it down, no problem at all, and then you look at it, it's absolutely like a mirror because you're not actually carving down mm -hmm. in there. And that's literally what it needs. So in here, where you had the burr between the two halves from the mold each side, I literally just came in here. We use this shape here, which is pretty much perfect fit for it, and just gave it a little light going over. And it took it out. And you look at it, and you've got no idea even where the center seam was. It does work an absolute treat. So, um, but it's, it's just like that thing of like when you're using rescribing, stuff like that, let the tool do the work. Yeah, definitely. Which I know I say, but we're all guilty of it. You get a bit bored and a bit, you know, come on. And then you end up overcooking it a little bit. But if you have got an, a little tab on there, like the ejector pin tabs, things like that, if you do it there a little bit raised, you go in there, it butts up to it and you end up trenching down lower. So it's better to sand that off and then go over the top just to clean everything. And it will even everything out, smooth everything out and make it nice. So oh, that'll be my, my little bit of advice for that one. I've still yet to get over them. Yeah. What I nearly forgot is uh, a pin vise. Uh, yeah. I definitely advise everyone staying off to get a pin vise. Because um, most kids, especially aircraft, will tell you to op open up a few holes here and there. 
And instead of trying to puncture it or hack a way through, get yourself some nice pin vice and a good selection of drill bits. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing as well with the pin vice, don't forget you can stick a needle in it, like a sewing needle, and use it for rescribing and for putting in riveting details, things like yeah, that on the cheek. That's what I've got. Because it's, when you've got a tool, because to be honest, I've got other tools with things locked in, but sometimes having a pin vice, it's nice and secure, and you've got more control over it. Going yeah, I've got two. I've got one with that's permanently got a needle in it, mm -hmm. and then I've got one for me drill bits. Yeah. No. And after that, obviously, there's loads of things you can go on with, but they're just my sort of favourites because obviously little things like closed pegs, you know, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you got a nice bunch there. I wonder where you got those from. I've got Tesco's. Look, look, even cleaner ones. Yeah, so. cleaner ones. There. The Tesco ones you got me. <laughs> Cocktail sticks, toothpicks. You know, wherever you are in the world, again, they're just one of those timeless classics. Nothing's yeah. ever going to beat it. Uh, absolutely fantastic. A nice range of brushes, which I was guilty of until I must admit to. I've been shopping. Oh, yes. So I have got a set. Of, these are um, the old uh, Dela Rowney ones. One day we'll work out how to pronounce that. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, these ones here are absolutely beautiful. They're just on a par with the uh, uh, AK ones. I've got the AK number six. Um, I've got the flat set as well, uh, and this one's the same as the AK one. Um, beautiful, absolutely fantastic, and it was all the sizes for a fiver, and that was from Hobby. It wasn't a cheap place. That was from um, Hobby Co. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, pretty good. No problem. Get you with all your brushes. So now I went from having no brushes to I got loads of brushes. For the sake of a tenner, I've now sorted. I got mug, I'm mug like Bob well. Ross now because I've got a Mr. Big Old brush as well, <laughs> and it actually this one has got on it flat wash. So I, you know, <laughs> so it'd be great for oils because you can blend your oils with that. Absolutely brilliant. But you got these ones in the sets are great because you get like chisel headed ones as well. Yep, absolutely fantastic. Those they're really nice, and all the others. So nice set of brushes, and you're good to go. Uh, post four is from Russell. Hi Russell. Uh, good evening all. The modelling essential for me um, at, is at least um, my scribing tools. Um, I'd be lost without them. Oh, Unless you're doing armour, which I, we were That's discussing this earlier. We were saying, <laughs> uh, the great thing is the last two armour kits obviously I've done, obviously the Sherman and now this one, no scribing. Come to think of it, no filler. No decals. Well, hardly well, decals. Little decals, little decals. But, um, you know, yeah. That's why I now know the armor guys, they put up with doing tracks and stuff like that. To make and up wheels, the seam lines. Because you don't have to do seam lines, <laughs> filling, rescribing, re riveting, and all of those things. You know, that's how I think they work it. So. Uh, I must admit, I, I do like my armor and my cars. Mm -hmm. Or my Land Rovers. Yes. As, as you reviewed one of my kits. Yes, I did. Very nice it was too. It was. <laughs> I think that must be the, the third one in their range, so I don't think they do any more at the moment, no. which is a shame, because I'd like to do some more of those. Yes, and we are out of those, by the way, everyone. I think we've oh, sold out of those now, they've all gone. Did, yeah, it did say on uh, stock on the, on the site. So they all went off, because they're only a tenner apiece, so that was cheap. No, it was a good bargain, that was. Fine. So yes, sorted. Yes, very nice. Uh, post 5 is from Wayne Hillman. Hi yeah. Wayne. Uh, hi guys, hope you're all well. Um, well, I have to say it, don't I? Flory Sanders, sanding sticks, washes, and pigments with a big cheesy grin. Um, love the Alex scrapers as well. I use them a lot. Um, also, the new trumpeter set of four tweezers. I am really impressed with them. Which are these? <laughs> Is that what they are? Is they it? are these. Um, uh, yeah. They are, no, I, must admit that, uh, I was given a set. <laughs> uh, full story was we were sent a set by the company who make them wanting to know if we wanted to put the Flory Models name on them and market them, but obviously it's not something we would get involved with. But these are the same ones, apart from ours don't have, what is it they call themselves? Master Tools, isn't it? Down here. You could have had it with Flory Models on it instead, but we decided not to go with these. Good job now, they're doing it. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but these are those. They're very nice. Very fine point on them, everything else. The only thing is they're not magnetic, so they don't stick to your magnet oh. thing. So now they're hanging in me cup holder. Just don't stick them up the other way, because I think you'd end up hurting your hand. They, are, they do come with, technically, a nice little plastic <laughs> cover. But you've got protect, No, I have, I've got them around somewhere. But because <laughs> I stick them in my rack like that now, they um, don't need it. But yeah, these are those said tools. <coughs> um, they're really cheap, the sets, um, and as I say, they're great little tweezers. 
especially if you're starting out. I think most of the Master Tools range, if I'm honest, is good stuff. Um, you know, as you say, I've got their photo etch sets, a lot of their tools, and they really are nice stuff. Uh, good price as well. Um, at the bottom of Wayne's comment, he's put, um, Sid, what happened to your egg plane? It never reached the forum. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I did. good point. What to that? I didn't realise it ended this weekend. Because obviously I've been it's working. It's not this on... weekend, it ended last weekend. Yeah, but. Um, so you never completed it? You got sidetracked by doing the B25? I did. I've, I've, got all, I've got the clear coat onto it. You see, Wayne, you just can't get the stuff. I know, terribly. Do try. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's got a clear coat on it. I was going to put the decals on it this week and then mm -hmm. have it run ready by the weekend. But well, no. Too late, because I had it in my head that it was next weekend that it ran out. Oh. But hey-ho. Never mind. I'm not going to say anything. We won't talk any more about it. <sighs> did you <laughs> sand it down to oblivion? <laughs> No, but Adam did. No, but Adam yeah, <laughs> got off me and done it for me. Adam got carried away. He's got a sunroof now. <laughs> I must admit, though, it's got no seam lines on it. But it has. <laughs> uh, post six is from Ian Smith. Hi, Ian. Uh, good afternoon, evening, Phil, Sid, Steve, and uh, any other assorted guests. Um, on my main modelling essentials is good lighting. I have three daylight um, similar to OTT lights, 100 watt equivalent compact fluorescent bulbs above my modeling desk. Uh, one directly above my main working area and two angled pose uh, lights on each side. Uh, nice clean bright light. The other tool I could not be without is my OLFA craft knife. Um, the one that looks like just like the Tamiya knife but cost about a quarter of the price. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I, I hope Sid survived his GoPro event. I didn't film it. Didn't film it. See, I he's didn't. sacked everyone. <laughs> I got so carried away with it. So I not only did it. you not do your egg plane, you didn't film that. You should have done a before and after photo theory. Could have done. Could have done. But you didn't. No. So there's no point with that one. Fuck. God, disgraceful. Honestly. If you'd like to see Stid kilt in some particular way, please <laughs> post up your things. <laughs> Take him outside, string him up. He'll be hanging upside down next show from over there. You could do that from back out there. You'd be all right. I could. So, Steve, what do you use for lighting? Um, my main one is this uh, three tube, which are all daylight tube, desk lamps. Um, I forget who makes them. You can pick them up for about sixty pound on eBay. Um, at the moment, mine's only got two tubes working, and it's ample light. Um, I'm also surrounded by daylight lights as well, strip light in, in my cave area. But I definitely recommend getting one of them. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Move it out a bit. Yeah. No, very nice. I must admit, I you know, as most of you will know from back in the day, I had absolutely loads of, um, well, I say loads of them. I had two of the similar ones to Steve, and I have both sides came in. That's when I had a bench this big. Uh, now we're doing all of this. We've had to go a little bit over the top. <laughs> so now we've got um, banks of LED, big square <laughs> things, which you can't look upwards because otherwise you need it. We also have another one that we call the sun, which is that 135 <laughs> watt daylight thing. It looks like a 99 thing. It does, doesn't it? Flake. Yeah. Or um, one of those um, marshmallows ones. Yeah, Disney marshmallows. That's it. So, um, and it's the funny thing. So after we do this show, we turn obviously off these lights. And if I just have the normal light on, it's like <laughs> blackness in here. It's like yellow. It's like everything's <laughs> yellow and you can't see. The only trouble I have, I don't know if you noticed in the reviews, but because I've got the light set up in such a way, we don't have a shadow on the mat, purely because you've got lights coming in from all the angles. So you can't see panel line detail very well because there's no shadows to it because it obliterates yeah. with light. <laughs> so I'm trying to show you panel line detail and things like that, but because there's just there's no shadows to be able to see it and it just illuminates, so it makes things a little bit tricky. But what it does enable us to do is get crystal clear images from the video. Uh, and at the moment we're still streaming at 1080, but we could up that because these are all recording in a lot higher. So, um, you know, we could actually go 4K one day. If I could ever stream 4K, we could do 4K viewing. Just dirty up your models to start with. Well, yeah, on the sprue. put some wash on yeah. it. Yeah. Wash them up so you could see it all. 
But that has been the noticeable thing, because I'm like, especially if you get a kit with very fine details, and I'm like, oh, and here we are, and you can see that beautiful pattern. No, you can't actually, because over there I have a big 32-inch <laughs> TV, which is my monitor to see what you guys are seeing. And I'm looking at it thinking, you can't see a thing. Go on, Steve. So we haven't really covered uh, glue. Uh, getting the right type of glues, I'd say quite an essential thing to do. Absolutely, I must admit, and I have them here. <laughs> Funny enough, I had this pre-planned, amazingly. <laughs> um, for me, uh, Tammy Extra Thin was my staple glue for the last 10, 15 years, okay? Um, even when you couldn't get it in the UK, I used to get it brought in and all the rest of it. One glue I am using more and more is the White Top Tamiya. Um, this stuff is absolutely great. It dries instantly. It's, I think it even dries sometimes quicker, considering it's thicker than extra thin. Extra thin tends to be hang around a little bit. Little things you do, when you've sanded apart and you've scratched it quite heavily, if you just give it a coat of this stuff, it sort of self-levels everything. It's a thicker glue. Um, some people have called it like a liquid resin, uh, the way the glue works. It's very similar. It does work like that. But the great thing is this stuff has got a fantastic, um, what I call, uh, bite capability. As in, if you get two bits, you put this stuff between it, it will hold it instantly. It's got instant grab. Okay, once it's dry, absolutely no problem. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're using this, the brush is big, it's unwieldy, it, 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 it's no good for doing small detail work, but then that's why you would use the green top. But certainly, having used this stuff, and I use it all the time with the armor, especially, and I used it on the hind coal, I am a complete convert, which is something I didn't think I'd ever be because you say extra thin, no problem at all. It's just that extra thin dries too quick. So i.e. you're doing a big bit and you get halfway across and you look back and it's dry. This stuff, you can put it on there and it'll stay wet. Not massively longer, I said it does dry quite quick. A lot of people seem to think this is just like liquid styrene. No, it's not. It's something a little bit different. Um, but it does work really, really well. So thank you, Matt, because Matt sent me this one. <laughs> so if you, uh, if you are thinking about glues, from my point of view, there are two must-haves. I think they're the best ones you can possibly get at the moment. There is other ones, and we've been through it before, but from my point of view, they are my absolute must. Yeah. So Steve, what do you use? I use the same as you, actually. Uh, and the only other glue I use a lot of is, obviously, Vital Bond CA glue. Yeah. Um, I've used loads of different brands, and I think this is the best that you can get. Also, their kicker, which yeah. I have there. Their <laughs> kicker is fantastic as well. Yeah. I must admit, the, um, I'd say I don't use the Vital Bond glue. I use the Vital Bond debonder, which you probably saw all down there. I've got a few of them. Um, but I must admit, I tend to use the Zapper Gap purely because I haven't tried the Vital Bond stuff. Perhaps I have to give that a whirl. Trouble with the Zapper Gap, it's great for the first few months, um, and obviously you're not going to go through a big bottle of it, but after a few months it loses that instant grab, which isn't a mass problem, and the labels don't stay on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's not, you know, it still does its bit, but you need a bit of kicker. When this stuff's brand new, it will everything instantly, uh, and away you go. But I use the medium one. It's got a good gap capability. It will fill. Um, it, as I say, it does the usual thing. It'll dry rock hard and all the rest of it. But um, in conjunction with a bit of kicker, it's fine. But on its own, it's not quite as good when it's been open a while. And I think all CA glue obviously goes off over time. But again, you know, if you wanted a list of everything you must have, um, you know, obviously kickers aren't up there, but if you're around and you see them, grab them. To be honest, they're out of stock at my supplier at the moment. I'm still waiting for them to come in. And I'm down to probably a dribble in the bottom of that one. But um, yeah, it, it's definitely a bit of a must have. Mm -hmm. Comes in very, very handy for all your jobs. You, what do you use for glue? Same. You say? Same, yeah, extra thin. I did use the um, Mr. Surface, Mr. Yeah, Mr. S glue. Yeah, I must yeah. Admit, I've got rid of mine. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Which is That's the one. one. Yeah. yeah. The um, one that doesn't reach the bottom. Hence, but, mine's yeah, got half a ton of metal the in The brush it. doesn't reach the bottom. No, brush doesn't reach the bottom. So. so, all the boats that you would be putting in your paint, you've put in your glue. Yeah. <laughs> trying to fill it up a bit. <laughs> and we've just looked at that. I think there's one in there that isn't a marine grade because there's one rusty one in there now. So that's not a good sign. Oops. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be using that glue now. Rusty glue. <laughs> Weathering effect. Indeed. <laughs> rusty bolt. Mm. And you can scratch build the door 
for the um, the um, uh, force field jammer. Oh right, the force field generator. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can build the door, scratch build the door. Oh, why don't I just do the forest while I'm at it with an Ewok battle going on? Steve, we need more stormtroopers. <laughs> 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 and we can do the entire Endor scene, shall we? We'll do that for Telford. Get, get enough members building them. Yeah, well that's it. There you go, the theme for Telford this year, the Battle of Endor, all right? So what we need there, we need, I don't know, probably 10 ATSTs. need a couple of attacks, they might be out by then, and then, um, you know, some stuff. A few Tidarium shuttle. Be a challenge, wouldn't That's it? That's it, well, Ewoks, no, they haven't done Ewoks yet, are they? So we'll have to get them to do that. So yes. I think mean, that'd, I mean, that'd be a good fun. But the trouble is though, the Scout bike is one one twelfth scale, um, but the actual uh, walker there is 148th. So we're happy far away. Scout bikes at the front, and we're doing it in perspective. And then the TIE fighter will be beyond that, and the X-Wing and that. So everything's in the scale from a distance. Dear Telford organisers, we need a table approximately six foot wide by 44 foot long. And that way we can have a glimpse of the actual Endor battle. I don't think they'll go for it. Oh dear. Not even for us. That'd be, good, that'd be a good chuckle that one. It would be a good laugh and I'd enjoy doing it. I'll sit and build 10 of them. They're easy. <laughs> <laughs> what we do, we'll have to do, is Steve get involved with well, we're doing his, we'll do a live build. Yeah. So we'll sit down and Steve can do his live. Be a good one, would it Steve? It would not up for that. You up for that? Be a good one. Yeah. Me get one. And then you'll have to get one then. Uh, and if any, we get another guest in here as well. Yeah. We get John Adam. or Adam or any but all of them. Adam, and we'll have yeah. a live build because these things will go. If you got if you got your ass in gear, I reckon you could get these together in about two hours. Built, not painted, obviously, but just from a built point of view. Because as I say, they don't take long. They don't take glue. So uh, have you seen how how fussy Adam oh, is? Yeah, Adam might take a bit longer. <laughs> We just have to get him down to it. Give him a few drinks first. He'll be fine. Oh, yeah, that'd be right, yeah. Oh, yeah, chuck it all and, together. End up being coloured pink. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, got, I've got his pink. He gave me X17. <laughs> Penis pink. Right, next. Uh, Go on in. I'll let you read it because I think you find this one quite impressive. Okay. Uh, hi, me again. Sorry, this is Tim. Um, uh, so I got one of these from Hobby Link Japan for just £8. Any tips on how to tackle this? <laughs> Jesus. I've seen uh, a lot of your videos on your planes, but I think this is a little different to the normal models. Uh, I really don't know uh, what I'm doing with this plane. To be honest, we've done stuff like this, or I've done stuff like this in the past. They're not as bad as it actually looks. Um, a lot of it is paintwork. I'm just checking before it turns out is one giant deck what it is. <laughs> so the big thing is, I've, if, I, I don't know if it's on the site anywhere. I did a lot of F-18 Hornets, a specialist marking F-18 Hornets. I've done them in 132nd and 148th, as you know, I did a few. Uh, and some of them were in markings like this. Um, so especially the Canadian ones where they're absolutely covered. Um, what you wanna do is basically get the paintwork down and get the paintwork in the right place. Now this one isn't too bad because it's solid colours. When you've got the ones which fade to different colours, it's a little bit more of a difficult thing. But what you want to be doing is taking your cues from the actual um, the, the decals, the instructions, and making sure that they marry up. Because sometimes the instructions will say it goes to a panel line and actually the decal doesn't go that far. So what I would invest in is getting yourself a calipers and just measure some of these distances do marry up to the actual model. Okay, because let's just assume you've got one of these white bits here, is this here, okay? Is it actually right? Are you gonna be able to blend it in? It may be easier to mask this area and actually um, physically spray it and do it in paint rather than the decal, mm -hmm. okay? And then go round it and do it like that. Um, and obviously getting this color matching it right as well is gonna be a little bit tricky. Um, you know, because obviously if the call out is for a wacky colour, if you haven't got that wacky colour, you're going to have problems. But generally looking at it, where I could paint it, especially this white, I would actually physically paint it rather than use the decals. The yellow, a little bit different because it's a faded yellow. It starts off very strong and fades off. Okay, this is what this business is on these decals down on the bottom here. So I would probably use those. But this white stuff, I don't know. I think I would probably go with um, the use of uh, actually spraying it because you've got the arrows these arrows which are on the white you've actually got the arrows to go on as an afterthought I think 
so you can put them in afterwards and that way you'll save a lot of problems especially trying to get decals to wrap around leading edges uh, and things like that would the paint color underneath show through white decal that could be also your other problem as well getting it to color in personally i'd spray it and then you do all the detail stuff afterwards now being japanese and they love it they've gone in with a big black wash right the way afterwards to really accentuate everything on um but um you know these japanese f-16 hybrids as i used to call them because it's like some love child and f-16s that isn't an f-16 is what they call it an f-2 is it or something the japanese one yeah f-2 yeah let's just you f-2 that's right because it looks like a love child of an f-16 um but um yeah so from my point of view i think i would go along with measuring out calipers are brilliant for this because you can make sure the decals are going to be the right size where you want them to fit uh, but definitely all this white stuff i would be amazed if that isn't painted um, because you're just not going to get it to join up on leading edges and on the tails and all the rest of it and you can try and do that thing where you actually go in there and paint it um, um, you know, uh, sorry, touch in after you've decaled it. So you put the decals on both sides, but you've still got the line in the middle. And when you try and touch in white, it's horrible. You get big white marks and ugh, it doesn't look nice. So I'd be inclined to actually go in there and spray all the white work. So usual thing, two options, go in with the white first, okay? Do the white um, and then mask all the white off completely, which will probably be a lot easier, okay? Then go in with this orange color right the way over the top and then the blues on these tails uh, and everything else and then decal after that because the only one I can't see is this one down here for the writing on the tail on the white oh it's there so you might need to go in with that because it hasn't got the writing unless the writing is one of these or something unless, oh no you're okay it's these forget it you have got the option to do both because it also it's got that color as a decal for the writing so definitely spray all the white, go for that. That would be my advice. Now yeah, what's all your Sherman build? Okay, yeah. caught over there now, have you? Mm -hmm. What'd you think? You sure? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. As, as they said, it could do better. Yes. <laughs> 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 all right then, it's a good job I don't have that at the end of each build. Please rate it from one to five. How did you find this build? Do a survey on the end of each one. I'll cringe at the, oh God. <laughs> One thing, actually, whilst we're here, a um, couple of things, whilst we're doing housekeeping things, because I think we're running out of questions. First thing I just have to mention is um, Stefan's Enterprise is now going up onto the actual main site. He's finished it and it is an absolute stonker. So if you haven't seen his uh, Tamiya 1350 Enterprise aircraft carrier, you've got to see this one, because this is another absolute stunning, stunning piece one. of work. Uh, part, well, to be honest, it's all been on the site for months. So just I keep forgetting to put it actually on it. Uh, but that started going up again so i'll put that up over the next few weeks because i think he's i've got about another five episodes to go up of that so that will go up over the next couple of weeks um steve's mentioned it as well and if you don't he's going to come about a bat up your night dress uh is to actually <laughs> remove your egg sig which i've noticed tonight most of them have steve they've been quite good certainly the ones in this thread um for moving your egg sig banners because they're going to get turned off any minute and you're going to end up with a nice big red cross in that place. Um, so we don't really want that, they're a bit unsightly. So if you can get them removed uh, and tidy up all your threads and various bits and pieces. But the other thing as well was, obviously um, I look at the statistics in the forum, um, you know, for obviously what things are looked at, but also I spend most of my time, as you imagine, on the main site. Uh, and one of the things I pay particular attention to is the actual attention rate which I know you haven't got much of one because, you know, that's so what it. Doing? Yeah, precisely. <laughs> uh, but basically it's how much you actually, you know, watch the videos and go right the way through. Now the golden time is 20 minutes because over 20 minutes, people tend to switch off. Uh, and I don't mean just turning this off, it's just that they might come off of the video and then come back to it later or whatever. What I want to know from you guys, so post up under here if you could, is what, amount of time are you comfortable for each episode to be now i know you obviously got your die hard guys out there who says oh you could do an hour and that'd be fine but is what were you happy to sort of sit and watch because obviously i'm doing a lot of videos now you're basically getting god knows how many hours every week going up there but i want it to be sort of meaningful to you guys all right so if you were thinking look if you could make each show 15 minutes would be better then I can put them up in 15 minute lumps uh, and do them that way. So that way it keeps your attention span. But I look back 
at the video builds of how they are, and as an average, you get to 20 minutes, and the last 10 minutes, it, it drops off, okay? Um, so obviously, I'm trying to keep that retention for you guys to watch the entire video, because then I know you're getting it out. Now, it doesn't actually allow for you coming back and watching the last 10 minutes somewhere else. But if you would be happier saying, look, I prefer each episode to be 20 minutes long, I can do them to 20 minutes during editing. You know, and I could then put up, you know, perhaps two 20 minute ones on a Tuesday or something. So you've got that thing of going through. So it just makes it easier for you guys to watch it. Also, the other thing as well is the actual new show is going to be made up now of this show. OK, because to be honest, we do far more interactive things here, helping people out, answering questions, feedback from you guys, which is what this is all about, than I do sat on my own on a Friday. Obviously, I'm running out of stuff to do on a Friday, uh, okay? And, it, you know, if I don't get the feedback from you guys about, you know, you love the show, you thought it was crap, whatever, um, then I don't know what I'm doing. So, like this week, nobody mentioned at all anything about the new show. And I put up the thing about oil paints, which I slipped in, Oils 101. It's going to be a standalone as well, but nobody mentioned it at all. Uh, and nobody mentions anything when I talk about, when I put up, used to put up the daily things of what went up there. The whole point was it was supposed to be so I could get your feedback, I, you can engage, uh, other members know what's going on and everything else. But nobody was answering any of it. So I've taken it out of there because, you know, you know me, if it's not being used, I'll get rid of it. Um, so it was just, I need to know what you guys want, how you want it, lengths, times, frequency, what you want up and all the rest of it. Because quite frankly, I'm motoring on how we're getting quite ahead of where you guys are, but how much can you physically take is the other thing as well. You know, there's no point in me banging up all these videos if you're hardly watching them because I'm putting up too much. You know, would you prefer quantity over quality and all those various bits and pieces like that? Would you rather see more stuff on painting, weathering and the finishing of a model rather than the construction, for instance, and stuff like that? That way I can push through construction quicker and get more onto and more in depth with other areas instead of just doing a big old build, which I tend to keep them between 10 and 15 parts and things like that. So as I said, it's your site. Let me know how you want it and I can do it if it's in my power. Okie dokie. If not, then whatever. If not, we'll just continue to ignore you and you can do what you like. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> but, um, obviously, the cameras are all recording, even though we're not actually doing anything here today. Um, oh, are they? Oh. Yeah, so we have got other cameras recording all of this in glorious HD and all the bits and pieces. So the idea is if, if you guys say to us things like, you know, can you show us A, B and C, then what we can do is we can do a live demo here. You can watch it live and then watch the replay of it. Uh, in HD uh, with all the cameras with all the angles so you can actually see it so that is the plan with it we've also said and Steve's up for it as well that perhaps we'll do some building as Ooh, well and various definitely. things and if you want to ask Steve any questions then uh, obviously we'll try and get through so the whole point of this is is this little format is going to be our new sort of interactive thing with you guys we want to do it and i have to organize it with steve as well is to do some of the saturday ones yeah uh, so if you guys in the states and australia if you're going to be up early then we can get involved with you guys as well um so we can make these very much interactive because i'll be honest with you we get through far more questions and more you know good content if you like with you guys than i ever do on a new show on a friday so, and it was just that thing. I wanted to take the new show um, and make it more like we're doing here. And, and also, you can actually play this in the background. Yeah. And it still be informative yes. while you're still modeling. Yeah, absolutely. So. And the whole idea is I can edit it, obviously, into a, a format yeah. and obviously edit Sid out. Yeah. So, Definitely. you know, the bit where we string him up, we can just put, edit him put, out. Put a there. nice blonde in my place. That's it. Yeah, we could do that. Right. So that's about us for tonight. Yep. Um, big thank you for Steve for joining us. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Steve. Steve. Thank you for your sure. And uh, thank you to you, Sid. You're welcome. For your bits and pieces. Always a pleasure. Thank you for doing my uh, paint rack today. That's right. Oh, I'll, um, you'll put the photo up later, are you? I'll, yeah, I'll put the photo up and I'll do your aftermarket one. I'm not going to find call, am I? Well, you should be able to because I've labelled it. Last time I had people in here to help you out, I couldn't find anything for a week. I've just got it back now where I can find everything. This is how bad my OCD was. Yeah. Is I was going to be my label maker. Yeah, that would be pretty bad. <laughs> you and Mel are on the same thing. Mel's got a label maker as well, and everything's got a label on it. It's one of the cat and got one on. Cat. I, I was going to, but in decide, instead, I, I wrote on your boxes instead. Thank you very much. Save so you having to lift them up. You can just see what and they to are. To be honest, people, I haven't even seen what he's done yet. 
because we came on air just as he was finishing it. So I don't even know he's done. So I'm going to have a look now to see exactly what he's done. Um, so you're going to see a lovely edited version of this on Friday. Indeed. If you want to see it in high res and high definition on the other camera. Um, I'm going to do the review for these and a little something else I've got down there as well. So it's like a sci-fi review thing this week uh, and everything else. So we'll get those up to you on fr uh, Thursday. Uh, Bradley, part one, obviously, as we said before, will be up there. Um, tomorrow so you can watch that one as well but as I said if we can give, make sure your egg things are removed from the forum guys that would be a big help uh, also, also that gets the um, the um, knife fighter one yeah if that's not already been done as well because oh yeah the night fighter, fighter as well. sig as well so if you can pull those night as well fighter and the egg plane. that'd be fantastic as well and we'll keep the forum all looking terribly tidy yep. so remember guys let me know your thoughts how this went all the rest of it pop it down there and uh, we'll see you all next week indeed you will all right then so Take care. cheers everyone bye 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 steve bye, steve. bye. 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 you can bye. never see you when you've gone off air <laughs>